Two large storms are coming to the United States over the next seven days, and these will bring a bunch of different problems, including the return of significant severe weather, with damaging winds, large hail, and tornadoes all a possibility. Additionally, we are expecting much warmer weather as we go into this weekend and next week after some of the coldest weather that we've seen all May long. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country today. And we've actually had a lot of big storms over the last 24 hours, mainly back over in Texas, New Mexico, and Colorado. The majority of these storms actually began in Mexico and moved into Texas, most of which were large hail and wind producers. Didn't really see much in the way of a tornado threat yesterday, but we are expecting a tornado threat today in areas like Texas, Oklahoma, and even back up into Kansas, where we're expecting all hazards, but tornadoes are going to be a possibility. And then back over on the East Coast, we still got plenty of rain falling in addition to tons of moisture, and we are expecting showers and thunderstorms to continue today with a little bit more severe weather in the southeast and as well as tomorrow, and there will be a slightly more significant threat of severe weather on Friday for parts of Georgia, South Carolina, and even North Carolina. Now let's talk more about the weather pattern that'll be impacting the United States over the next seven days, as this will directly impact how we are going to be seeing significant severe weather for the next seven to ten days. Beginning with what's happening right now, we actually have an upper level low that is spinning over the Midwest today and as well as tomorrow, and this is actually helping to fuel the threat of severe weather back over in the central and southern plains today. And then as we go into tomorrow, this storm system will gradually move further east, and I think Thursday we're not talking about anything crazy for severe storms, but as this storm moves further south, it'll actually intensify and bring the threat of a more localized threat of significant severe weather back over in the southeast on Friday with damaging winds, large hail, and perhaps even a couple of tornadoes being a possibility. And then by Saturday, the storm system is all along the east coast, large troughing, which will continue to bring cold weather to the Midwest, Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, in addition to rainfall across areas like the northeast. Notice how things are somewhat quiet back over on the west coast. We got a little low pressure system back over south of California, but by no means is that significant, at least for Saturday or Sunday. But by the time we go into Monday, that low pressure system will start to move off to the northeast as a larger scale trough develops back over on the west coast, and this should bring the threat of severe weather on Monday to the central plains, where all hazards of severe weather would be on the table, and perhaps even a bit more of a significant day for severe weather, either Monday or Tuesday, depending on the evolution of this low pressure system. And then on Tuesday and Wednesday, things start to get a little bit more uncertain, but the general subnoptic weather pattern is hinting at a very large-scale low-pressure system over the Rockies. And notice how we have a large area of southwesterly flow in our upper-level winds, and this should actually promote a more elevated threat of severe weather, likely beginning around Wednesday and then going all the way through Friday, maybe even into Saturday of this upcoming week. So definitely a long period of time here we're going to be dealing with severe weather, and that's going to be basically for anybody in this region where we could see severe weather anytime beginning from Monday, rolling all the way through Saturday. The exact locations and the exact magnitude of the severe weather events that will be happening are uncertain, but in a few minutes, I'm going to go over the future radar in the long-term forecast, and we'll talk more about what is upcoming here. But first, I want to talk a little bit more about what's happening today and tomorrow and Friday. So let's talk more about the short-term severe weather threat, beginning with today, which is Wednesday, and we have a triple-dipper slight risk of severe weather in place. Got one back over in the Central Plains and a couple more back over in the Southern Plains, or our main concern for today will be basically all hazards of severe weather. We're going to be talking about some damaging wind potential, might even see some significant damaging winds in southwest Kansas this afternoon. In addition to that, some very large hail is a possibility. It's a very small area that we could see hail as large as the size of apples this afternoon, right around Dodge City, Kansas. And then there is also a chance for a few tornadoes. The greatest chance of tornadoes will be in southwestern Kansas, northwestern Oklahoma. Might even see a spin-up tornado just off to the west there of Oklahoma City. Texas Panhandle, southeastern Colorado, all included in this threat, and there is currently a 2% tornado risk back over just to the west of Fort Stockton, Texas. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if we got a small 2% tornado risk just to the southwest of Dallas-Fort Worth for today. I do think there's a very low off chance that there's a spin-up tornado over there. We actually have quite a bit of wind shear in this area. It's not really strong wind shear, but we also have curved hodographs, which means we basically have winds changing directions throughout our atmosphere, so we may see an isolated tornado there if we get a discrete supercell. Otherwise, the bigger concern there will be large hail. As we go into Thursday, the threat of severe weather will be shifting even further south and further east. Another large marginal threat of severe weather in place for basically any state along the Gulf Coast. We've had this for about four or five straight days now. It is just endless down here. We are expecting at least some isolated severe weather on
on Thursday, with the main concern being isolated damaging winds and hail. Wouldn't rule out a spit-up tornado somewhere, but we do not really have an area that I would outline at this point that has any potential of really seeing a more uh, at least concentrated threat of a tornado for Thursday. Now let's talk more about the timing for severe weather for Wednesday all the way through Friday, beginning with what's happening today. Some scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms will be out there this morning. Nothing significant. As we go into the early afternoon, destabilization is expected across Colorado, Kansas, and even parts of the Oklahoma and Texas panhandle, which is eventually when we're going to see some supercells fire up. Right around 4 to 5 o'clock, we'll start to see at least a couple of storms fire right along the Colorado and Kansas border. And these will become a little bit more organized, I think, by about 6 to 7 o'clock tonight. And we might even see a large tornado somewhere in here in southwestern Kansas tonight. We actually have a lot of wind shear, and it is going to be a localized environment where we actually could see maybe a strong or large tornado. So this is definitely a day that you want to be staying weather aware, especially in southwest Kansas. By 7 to 8 o'clock, supercells will continue. This should start to cluster together a little bit more by about 9 to 10 o'clock tonight, becoming more of a focused damaging wind threat for northwestern Oklahoma and southern Kansas. And by 11 to 12 o'clock tonight, this area of storms will begin to weaken as it moves into Oklahoma. But isolated damaging winds should continue. And then by the time it reaches Tulsa, I think gusty winds will really be all that's left and maybe a little bit of lightning. And as we go into Thursday, things look pretty quiet for the most part. Maybe another isolated supercell back over in the high plains. That could also produce the potential for very large hail and maybe even an isolated tornado. Back over in the southern plains, things are going to kick off a little bit earlier in the day. We're expecting storms to start around 1 to 2 o'clock, mainly just off to the west of Dallas-Fort Worth near Abilene, Texas, where large hail will be the biggest concern. But there is a chance for an isolated spin-up tornado if we see a discrete supercell somewhere out here just to the southwest of Dallas-Fort Worth. By about 5 to 6 o'clock, these storms will start to cluster together more, becoming more of a wind and hail threat, but a low tornado risk may exist through about 7 o'clock tonight, and then by about 9 to 10 o'clock, most of the storms will be dying off as daylight heating starts to wind down. And then as we go into Thursday, just a few more scattered showers and thunderstorms. Most of those will be back over in the Texas Panhandle. Wouldn't rule out an isolated hailstorm somewhere back over between Houston and also the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. And then back over in the southeast, we are expecting a few showers and thunderstorms today to be relatively scattered anywhere from Louisiana back into Georgia and Florida. As we go into Thursday, a little bit more of an organized threat of severe weather may evolve back over in Georgia and also along the Gulf Coast. But generally speaking, a lot of this just can be isolated hail and wind. We're not really expecting much of a tornado threat. Really, the big day will be on Friday. We are expecting storms to fire up during the early afternoon hours, anywhere from about North Carolina back into Georgia. A couple clusters of thunderstorms will develop in our slight risk of severe weather, with damaging winds being the biggest concern. But there could also be a couple of spin-up tornadoes on Friday. And in addition to that, some large hail is also possible. This is by about 4 to 5 o'clock. These two clusters will continue to move to the east, with mainly a damaging wind threat, but again, an isolated tornado still a possibility. Some storms will also develop near the Gulf Coast, once again with large hail and damaging winds possible. And then by around 7 to 8 o'clock, those storms are moving through southern South Carolina, with damaging winds continuing, and again, an isolated tornado being possible. So again, really right now, it looks like today and maybe Friday are live stream days. I would say right now, it's a very low chance of us going live either day, but it is a possibility, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified if we do go live. Now, beyond Friday, the severe weather threat is going to start to get, I think, a lot more interesting, where we are talking about a more organized threat of severe weather. So Saturday and Sunday right now look to be somewhat quiet. I don't think we're going to be talking about anything organized. High pressure is going to be dominating most of the lower 48, really anywhere across the lower 48. We're not really talking about much rain Saturday or Sunday. If you get rain, consider yourself lucky or maybe unlucky. I don't know how you want to put it. As we go into Monday, the threat of severe weather will begin to return back over in the Great Plains. Low pressure will be right over Colorado, New Mexico. We should at least get some isolated supercells on Monday, anywhere from the Texas Panhandle back up into Kansas and maybe Nebraska, with the biggest concern being hail and wind, but a tornado or two are definitely going to be in play with this sort of setup. Should have plenty of wind shear on Monday. It's just going to be a matter of how many storms actually fire. On Tuesday, that low pressure system moves further to the north and northeast into North Dakota, and we should see more storms fire off back over in the Midwest on Tuesday, with all hazards of severe weather once again being on the table. On Wednesday, another low pressure system moves over the Rockies with more scattered
better to numerous severe weather as a possibility. Again, it's not certain since we could still see things change. Anywhere basically in the Great Plains would have some level of a risk of severe weather on Wednesday. As we go into Thursday, the threat of severe weather will shift further to the east, back over into the Midwest, and also back through Kansas and Oklahoma, with all hazards of severe weather once again on the table. And then on Friday, the threat of severe weather does become a lot more uncertain, but if we were to continue to see severe weather on Friday, it would likely be back over in the Midwest and also the Ohio Valley. So again, very active stretch of weather is ahead here over the next 10 to 14 days. We will have a break this weekend, but again, keep in mind that it's going to get active once again next week. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel, click the bell icon so you're notified with the latest updates. We will continue to have daily weather updates aside from either today or tomorrow. We're at least going to take, I think, one day off unless the weather just looks so significant. Then we may just have daily weather updates all up until the next week's severe weather event. On top of that, I do want to thank all the members on this channel. We were actually able to upgrade our computer rig. We have a better motherboard and CPU now, which means our live streams and videos should even be higher quality than before. I really appreciate all the members on this channel. Thank you guys all so much for watching. We'll see you guys again in the next weather forecast or possibly in a live stream later today if the severe weather warrants a stream.